of your prophetic word in the word of God concerning your life concerning your family I declare it shall not fall to the ground in the mighty name of Jesus for it is written so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me forward but it shall accomplish that which I please it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it the word of God is a messenger and I declare the messenger of God is in somebody's house now receive your miracle because your messenger is with you now your messenger is in your house now your messenger is in your business now the word of God is a messenger and I declare the word has been sent to you receive your word receive your word receive your word receive your chain receive your chain receive your chain receive your chain the word of God is in your house the word of God is in your family the word of God is in your business the word of God is a messenger he said he shall not return your word will not return to God it shall be fulfilled your children will make it your husband will make it your wife will make it everybody in your household they shall prosper because the messenger is in your house somebody shout the messenger is in my house come on shout it the messenger is in my house the messenger of the word of God is in your house right now. He's in your business right now. He's touching that business. He's touching that bank account. That, that, that mobile money account. Receive the touch. Receive the touch. Receive the touch. Receive the touch. Receive the touch of the Holy Ghost today. Receive an anointing. Somebody today, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is falling upon you now. Receive it 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 now. Your messenger is here. 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 He's moving in this place. There's He's moving in this place. He's moving in this place. Sing. The Spirit of the Lord is moving in this place. The Can we, Spirit can we start before you start the drum? Can we finish the first part before you start the drum? To be better, okay? Did you get it? Let's start. He's moving in this place. He's moving in this place. The spirit of the Lord is moving in this place. The spirit of the Lord is moving in this place. Is healing in this place. Just like 
Pentacles. Yeah, this mighty Russian wind, there's a shifting in the atmosphere. There's a shifting in the atmosphere. The glory, the glory, now the Lord is seen. Just like Pentecost, yeah. There's a mighty rushing wind, breathe life and comfort to your soul. Breathe in life and comfort to your soul. Peace and calmness fixing. Just like Pentecost, yeah. There's a mighty rushing wind. It's moving in this place. It's moving in this place. It's moving in this place. The spirit of the Lord. It's moving in this place, the spirit of the Lord. It's moving in this place. It's moving in this place. It's moving in this place. The spirit of the Lord. It's moving in this place. The spirit of the Lord is moving in this place. Is healing in this place. Is healing in this place. The spirit of the Lord is healing in the spirit. The It's healing in this place. It's healing in this place. It's healing in this place. The spirit of the Lord is healing in this place. The spirit of the Lord is healing in this place. He's turning lives around. He's turning lives around. The spirit of the Lord is turning lives around. The spirit of the Lord. After twice this a cappella. He's turning lives. He's turning lives around. He's turning lives around. It's turning lies around the spirit of the Lord. It's turning lies around the spirit. So Jesus said to them, Wait in Jerusalem. Wait in Jerusalem. Wait in Jerusalem. Then he said, For John truly baptized with water. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. Today, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Receive a baptism of fresh fire. So, listen, listen, I'm coming somewhere. Then, in Acts chapter 2, in Acts chapter 2, from verse 1, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. What were they waiting for? They had heard the word of God from Jesus. Wait in Jerusalem. Wait in Jerusalem. For the promise of the Father. 
Because the promise of the Father will be released upon you. So he said to them, wait in Jerusalem. So they were there waiting. They were there waiting. They were there waiting with one accord. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord waiting in one place. Then the Bible says suddenly, the Bible says suddenly, the Bible says suddenly, the Bible says suddenly. Listen, sometimes when the word of God comes, you don't know when that word will be fulfilled. When a prophetic word comes, you don't know when that prophetic word will be fulfilled. But I came to tell somebody today, there is an appointed time. There is an appointed season. There is an appointed time. There is an appointed season. There is an appointed time. There is an appointed season for the fulfillment of the prophetic word. For the fulfillment of the prophetic word. So the Bible says, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. I came to tell somebody today, any word of God unto your life, any word of prophecy that came upon your life, any word you received in your spirit, maybe in a dream and in a vision, and you have been waiting for some time now, you have been expecting for some time now, I came to tell somebody today that when the day fully comes, when the day fully manifests, I declare that suddenly you shall begin to see the fulfillment of that dream, the fulfillment of that word, the fulfillment of that prophecy coming to pass in your life. So I came to tell somebody today, don't give up on that word of God. Don't give up on that word of God. Job said, I will wait all the days of my appointed time. Will I wait until my change comes? And I came to tell somebody today as you keep waiting on the word of God, your change will come. Your healing will come. Your miracle will come. Your deliverance will come. Your salvation will come. Your prosperity will spring forth in the mighty name of Jesus. I came to encourage somebody today. Don't give up on the word of God. Don't give up on the prophetic word. Keep on holding on to the prophetic word. This charge I commit unto this son Timothy according to all the prophecies that went before upon thee that thou mightest by them war a good warfare. I came to tell somebody today in the realms of the spirit there may be some war concerning the fulfillment of that prophetic word but I came to declare somebody today you are victorious in the name of Jesus. That word will be fulfilled in your life. That word will come to pass in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. No word of God concerning your life shall fall to the ground. Whatever God said about you before you are born onto the face of the earth. He said unto Jeremiah, Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. Before you became a clot of blood in your mother's womb, I had ordained and our um, first service in English. Um, we begin our service in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I want us to pray and give God thanks today and bless His holy name. Thank Him for your life, thank Him for your family. Um, thank him for the church, thank him for Ghana, thank him for the nations of the world, thank him for yet another morning to be in his presence. Lift up your voice and begin to thank God. If you are at your house fellowship, please stand to your feet now and let's begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you glory. Be exalted, be magnified, be lifted up on high. We ascribe to you all praise, we ascribe to you all glory. We give you praise, we give you glory, be lifted up on high, 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 be lifted up on high. We give you thanks. Thank you for every life. Thank you for all families in the church. Thank you for my brothers, sisters, aunties, uncles, cousins. Thank you for friends. Thank you for the nation of Ghana. Thank you, Lord, Daddy, for your grace and for your message. We are grateful this morning, O oh Lord. Be exalted and be magnified in the mighty name of Jesus. Be lifted up on high. In Jesus' name we pray. We want to continue to pray. We want to ask that uh, the presence of God will be mighty with us this morning. We want to pray that God will visit us specially in this place and wherever you are also watching. We want to pray that God will send the Holy Spirit as a mighty rushing wind to pour out his grace. In Numbers 11, 31, he says, And there went forth a wind from the Lord, which brought quails from the sea. And he led them forth by the camp, as it were a day's journey on this side, as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp. 
and as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. Pray and ask that God will send the Holy Spirit as a mighty rushing wind to breathe upon His word, to breathe upon all we do this morning, to breathe upon you wherever you are gathered. We want to ask that the Holy Spirit will come down as a mighty rushing wind. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Father, we pray this morning, O oh God, in thy presence there is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. This morning we ask, O oh God, for your special visitation. Visit us, O oh Lord. Visit us, O oh Lord. Visit us in this place. Visit us, O oh God, wherever people are gathered, O oh Lord. Cause us, O oh God, to see your glory like never before. I pray, let the wind of the Holy Spirit blow. Father, breathe upon your word. Breathe upon all of us in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you thanks, we give you praise, O Lord. For in thy presence there is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. We ask of God for a special visitation this morning. In the name of Jesus, we give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. We want to continue to pray finally. We want to ask that the word of God come in this morning. will come with understanding. will come with wisdom. Um, that the grace of God will rest upon the word. We want to pray that God will breathe upon his word. He said it's not my word like as a fire, like as a hammer. Which breaketh every rod in pieces. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word abideth forever. Sayeth God. You want to pray that the word of God will come forth to us today in strength, in anointing, with understanding. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Father, we ask, O oh God, Father, that you will breathe upon your word today. Let the coming of the word this morning, Father, bring light, bring illumination. In the name of Jesus. Grant to God that with boldness the word will be declared. Grant to God, Father, that with utterance by the Holy Spirit the word will be declared. Let your word be like honey coming to us, O God. Sweet to our, our taste, O God. Sweet, O God, in our mouth. In the name of Jesus. We give you thanks. We give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. I want us to enter into a time of worship. I want you to just prepare your heart and uh, wherever you are at your house fellowship, why don't you lift up your hands and just begin to worship God and tell God how much you love him. Father, I love you. I love you above all else. I love you with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. Just worship God this morning. Give God thanks. Thank him for your father. Today is Father's Day. Father, we thank you for all the fathers you have blessed us with. We are grateful, O God. For your grace, for your mercy, so Lord, be exalted in the name of Jesus. I want to enter into worship. Oh, mighty God, I bless your name. Holy one, I worship you, for you are God of yourself. You are God of yourself. You are God of yourself. Age to age, age to age, I think you read this a bit. You're still the same. All creation, all creation. We shout your name, for you are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. For who you are, for who you are, for who you are, I will bless your name. For who you are, for who you are, I worship you, I worship you, for you are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Oh mighty God, mighty God, I bless your name, I bless your name. Holy one, holy one. I worship you, I worship you, for you are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Age to age, age to age, you are still the same. All creation, all creation, oh, we shout your name. For you are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. For who you are, for who you are, 
For you, you are, bless your name. For who you are, for who you are, I worship you, I worship you. For you are God of I yourself. You are God of I yourself. Oh, for who you are, for who you are, I bless your name. For who you are, I worship you, I worship you. Oh, for you are God of I yourself. You are God of I yourself. You are God of I yourself. Oh, mighty God, mighty God, I bless your name. Holy One. I worship, you. I worship you. Oh, for you are God of I yourself. You are God of I yourself. Oh, age to age, age to age, you are still the same. All creation, all creation. Oh, worship you. Oh, for you are God of I yourself. You are God of I yourself. Oh, for who you are. I bless your name. For who you are. I worship you. I worship you. Oh, for you are God of I yourself. Oh, you are God of I yourself. Oh, for who you are. I bless your name. I bless your name. For who you are. I worship you. Oh, for you are God of I yourself. You are God of I yourself. You are high and lifted up. There is no one like you. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Oh, you are high and lifted up. There is no one like you. Halle. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hey. you are high, you are high and lifted up. There is no one like you. Oh, halle, 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 hallelujah. You are high, you are high and lifted up. There is no one like you. Halle, 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 halle. Hallelujah, 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 amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Oh, hallelujah, 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 amen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. For the last time, you are high and lifted up. There is no one like you. Halle, 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 hallelujah. You are high, you are high and lifted up. There is no one like you. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 amen. Oh, hallelujah. 
Call for light, you call for light out of darkness. You don't need a man, you don't need a man to be the God. Oh, but you have chosen to call us your own. You've got times, you've got times and seasons in your hands. You come for light, you come for light out of darkness. You don't need a man, you don't need a man to be the God you are. But you have chosen to call us your own. Lift up your voice in English or in your mother tongue and worship God. Don't speak in tongues, just worship God in your mother tongue or with English. Tell God how much you love him and appreciate him. Father, we give you thanks this morning. We ascribe to you all praise and we ascribe to you all glory. You alone deserve all praise, Lord. You alone deserve all honor. You alone deserve all worship. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving us all our sins, O oh God. Thank you for healing all our diseases. Thank you for delivering us, O oh God, from all evil and crowning us, O oh God, with your loving kindness and tender mercies. Thank you, Lord, that you for satisfying our mouth with good things, O oh God, for renewing our youth like the eagle. Thank you for the breath of life. We ascribe to you all praise, O oh Lord. We give you worship today. We magnify you today, Lord. Be exalted. Be magnified. Be lifted up on high. We give you thanks. We extol your name. We extol your name. We extol your name. We praise you. What a mighty God you are. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory. Be exalted. Be magnified. In the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. Be exalted. In Jesus name. Father, we give you thanks today. We ascribe to you all praise and all glory. Thank you for the breath of life. Thank you for our loved ones and even those who don't like us. Thank you for everybody around us. Thank you for the wealth. Thank you for Ghana. Thank you for um, everything you have provided us with, O Lord. For there is nothing that we are that you didn't make us. And there is nothing we have that you did not give to us. That is why we do not glory in anything. We give to you all praise. Father, you inhabit the praise and the worship of your people. Continue to be with us today. Cause us to encounter your power. Cause us to see your glory like never before. I bind any work of the devil against our service this morning. And wherever people are watching from, I stop any activity of the evil one. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus upon all we do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody said, Amen. I want to sing one or two uh, praise songs. And uh, we're getting ready to continue with the service. My God who began it, He will accomplish it. My Lord who began it, my Lord who began it. Oh, He will accomplish it. He is the Alpha, He is the Alpha and Omega. Omega, the beginning and the end. Oh, it will accomplish it, accomplish it. He is the Alpha, He is the Alpha and Omega, Omega, the beginning and the end. Oh, it will accomplish it, accomplish it. My Lord who began it, my Lord who began it, oh, he will accomplish, my 
Lord who began it, my Lord who began it. Oh, he will not come. He is the Alpha, he is the Alpha and Omega. Omega, the beginning and the end. Oh, he will accomplish, accomplish it. He is the Alpha, he is the Alpha and Omega. Omega, the beginning and the end. Oh, he will accomplish it, accomplish it. My Lord who began it, oh, he will accomplish My Lord who began it, my Lord who began it, oh, he will accomplish He is the Alpha, he is the Alpha and Omega, Omega, the beginning and the end. Oh, he will accomplish, accomplish it. He is the Alpha, he is the Alpha and Omega, Omega, the beginning and the end. Oh, he will accomplish it, accomplish it. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. Walking in the light. It is a great thing. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. A little faster. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. It is a great thing. To serve the Lord, walking in the light. Oh, walk, oh, walk, 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 walking in the light. Oh, walk, 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 walk walking in the light. Oh, walk, 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 walking in the light. Walking in the light. Oh, dance, oh, dance. Dance, 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 dancing in the light, oh dance, 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 dancing in the light, oh dance, 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 dancing in the light, oh dancing in the light, oh praise, oh praise, 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 praising in the light, oh praise, oh praise, praise, praising in the light, oh praise. Praising in the light, in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah, join the house of the Lord. Oh, in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah, join the house of the Lord. Oh, Oh, I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad. I was glad, I was glad when they said unto me, Oh Lord, I was going to the house. Oh, I was glad when they said unto me. I was glad, I was glad when they said unto me. I was glad, I was glad when they said unto me. Oh Lord, I was going to the house. Oh, in the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord. Hallelujah, join the house of the Lord. Oh, in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah, join the house of the Lord. Hallelujah, join. Oh, the Lord is good. I will lift him up higher. Everywhere I go, I will lift him up higher. The Lord is good. is good i will lift him up higher everywhere i go i will lift him up higher oh lift him up higher everywhere i go i will lift him up higher oh lift him up 
Wow, we give God thanks for this powerful praise and worship. It's powerful. Anyway, so we want to thank God so much um, for another Sunday morning. It's time for us to give our thanks offering. You know that it's a tradition. Um, in New Life Pentecostal Church, we always give two offerings. The first offering is called Thanks Offering, where we are giving money um, as a token in appreciation of all that God has done for us during the week, for his blessing, his favor, his grace. I mean, the fact that you are alive alone, you are alive alone. Look at how uncomfortable the nose mask is. And when you remove it, you, you are so grateful that you have fresh air to be breathing all around. So you want to take a very good offering today. Let's give God thanks. I want you, those of us who are meeting at the house fellowships, please take your money and the basket to go around and put your money into the basket or whatever they are using to collect it. So take physical cash. Um, and let's bless God. Those of us who are watching online from far away, send it to the mobile money, 0245-916319, 0245-916319. Let's pray over the thanks offering. Father, we give you thanks. I sanctify every offering today with the blood of Jesus. As we give today, we are blessed in Jesus' mighty name. We know that you look at this and do greater things in our lives. Be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, as the choir sings, please be sending your offering.
is turning lights around the spirit of the Lord is turning lights the spirit the spirit of the Lord is turning lights around the spirit of the Lord is turning lights Lift up your right hand, lift up your right hand. Let's pray. Let's get into the word of God uh, very quickly. want to pray. Lift up your right hand wherever you're watching from and ask that God will speak to you and bless you through the word. We want to thank God for the powerful song that just came. And lift up your right hand and just pray. Ask God to speak to you. Tell God that you want to hear from him. Tell God that you want to hear from him. Tell God that you want to hear from him. Tell God that you want to hear from him. Our strength, thy grace, thy rule, thy word, how I am, the glory of the Lord. Oh, our strength, thy grace, thy rule, is thy word. How I am is the glory of the Lord. Father, we give you thanks, we give you praise, be exalted, be magnified. Bless us today through the preaching of your word. Crucify this flesh on your cross, Father, and I pray that you fill me with your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on me. Use me today, Lord, for your glory. I pray for boldness, I pray for all trance. In the name of Jesus, I stop any work of the devil against the word. Let the entrance of your word bring forth light, bring illumination. Let the word transform somebody's life today in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you thanks. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said amen. Well, wherever we are, whether we are standing or seated, please be seated now. And um, let's get into the word of God. All right, let's go to Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4 has been a key scripture for some time. Very exciting series, which I have entitled Preparing for the Times Ahead. Malachi chapter 4, reading from the verse number 1 to the verse number 6, it says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly, shall be as stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts. For unto, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall and ye shall tread down the wicked for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this say the Lord of hosts. Then he said in the verse number four it says remember ye the law of Moses my servant, which I commanded him in, in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and with the judgments. Behold, I will send um, to you, behold, I'll send you um, Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and the dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children um, to the fathers, 
lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Well, this has been uh, the focus of our series for this month of June. We've been talking about preparing for the times ahead. In the verse number one, he says that God is the one speaking through the lips of the prophet Malachi. He says that for behold, a day is coming which shall burn as an oven. And all the proud and all that do wickedly shall be as stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them as an oven. So that day that is coming, obviously, is not a single day. Because it says that the day that cometh shall burn them up. So it refers to a season. We have looked at it and we have said that the day there doesn't mean a particular day as in one morning and one night, but it's talking about a season. So it says that it's going to be a season of difficulty, a season of hard times where the judgment of the Lord is going to be upon the earth. And one of the things about God is that when he's moving, you cannot tell whether it is him or it is the devil. But you see, in the verse number uh, 5, you see that Malachi qualified this day for us. He says, it's the great and the dreadful day of the Lord. But he says that that day shall burn as an oven. One thing about an oven is that when it's burning, when you put your hand into it, it burns. But you cannot tell where the fire is usually coming from. But Malachi helps us to understand that these will be days where God himself will be judging the earth for the wickedness of man and for the pride of man. And he says that um, he didn't stop there. He began to give us keys that can help us to escape that great and the dreadful day of the Lord. The first he said, he said in verse 2, he said, but unto you that fear my name. So meaning that the fear of the Lord is an escape route from the great and the dreadful day of the Lord. So we, we spoke about the fear of the Lord. And then also when he says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn us an oven, it's making reference to the previous verse. And the previous verse talks about serving the Lord. It says, Then shall ye return and descend between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. That's Malachi chapter 3. The verse number 18 showing that those who serve god in that dreadful time in that great day of the lord it says the lord shall spare them and deliver them in the verse 17 it says in the day he says i will take them up in the day that i make up uh, my jewels and i will spare them as a man spared his own son that serveth him so those who serve god i mean deliver themselves from the season of difficulty in which you have entered. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 7, he says that nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Then he said there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And he said all these are the beginning of sorrows. Meaning that those times will be very difficult times. There will be times of hunger. There will be times of pestilences. Um, like evil diseases, like pandemics, and then there will be a lot of shakings. But may the Lord deliver you because you serve him. And may the Lord deliver you also because you fear him. Well, today is Father's Day, and so because today is Father's Day, I'll jump one of the key points and talk about a very important topic. Uh, I, I wish that everybody here would have been in another church somewhere when I, when, so, so that I can preach um, um, fully. I don't like preaching and people misunderstanding what I'm preaching and saying. And so, verse four, verse four and the verse five and the verse number six says, "Behold, I, I will send you the prophet Elijah or Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and the dreadful day of the Lord." And he says, "When he comes, he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to the fathers." So it tells you that. When, when he says that God is going to send Elijah the prophet, you know, it has two meanings. The first meaning is that God was talking about, you know, there were two comings. I mean, Jesus, Jesus will come twice. He has come once already. He's going to come again. But before he came the first time, there was a man called John the Baptist. He came to prepare the way. And he came in the spirit and power of Elijah. Before Jesus will come again the second time, this time around, Elijah himself will come down. And when he comes, he will appear in Jerusalem. 
he will fight for the saints. He will fight for the Christians who are there. And they will kill him. And after killing him, after three days, he will resurrect and go back to heaven. All this is written in the book of Revelation. Go there and read it and you'll find it. <laughs> you know. But the key thing I want to bring to your notice this morning is the fact that God places a high value on the father-child relationship. God places a high value on the father-child relationship. In so much so that he says that a shift in the heart of the father or a shift in the heart of the child, not even in the attitude, but in the heart. Because sometimes, you know, you know one man said to his children one day, not everybody who is laughing is happy. People can show their teeth, but in their hearts, they are not happy. So it says that when the father's heart shifts from the child, or when the child's heart shifts from uh, the father, it says he will come and smite the earth with a, with a curse. As I was thinking about this scripture yesterday, as I was trying to prepare the sermon notes uh, because of our shepherds and all that, I mean, one thing struck me. The thing that struck me is the fact that many times we talk about sons and daughters obeying their parents so that they will do well. But you see here that in this case, it says if the father's heart turns against the child and the child's heart also turns against the father, God is going to smite the earth with a curse. Now, when you look at that word earth, it's talking about your territory. So it's not talking about even the whole earth. It's talking about your territory. So everybody can be doing well, but in your territory, in your workplace, where you are working or where you are schooling, things will be hard in that place. The first time God cursed the earth, it was not easy at all. It was when Adam's heart shifted away from God the Father. Adam had God as his father, always communicating him, with him, always following with him. But the day his heart shifted from God the Father, God did not curse him per se. He cursed the earth. He didn't curse him. He cursed the earth. And listen to what God said in Genesis chapter 3 from verse 17 to 19. Genesis chapter 3 uh, verse 17 to 19. It says, Then unto Adam, he said, it says, Because thou hast hearkened unto thy wife, it doesn't mean listening to your wife is, is, is not a good thing. But when women speak, you must be careful. Because sometimes there are motives. You know, so you must be careful when your wife is giving you advice. It says, because thou hast hearkened unto thy wife and hast eaten of the fruit, you know, of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it. It says, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow thou shalt eat, or in sorrow shalt thou eat of it, all the days of thy life. Then it says, Tones also and tistils shall it bring forth to thee. Thou shalt eat the herb of the earth. Then he said in 19, he says, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return to the ground, for out of it thou was taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So when God, I mean, when God's heart also was affected and his heart was shifting from his son Adam and Adam's heart had already shifted from his father, God cursed the ground and look at the curse. He said that you will have sorrow. You will eat in sorrow. Look, you can have money and not be happy. You can have food and not be happy. You can be wearing the nicest clothing and not be excited. You can be living in the nicest place. Everything is nice, paved and all that and not be a happy person. Happiness is not dependent on the material provisions that is around you. He said there shall be sorrow. Then he said, there will be a lot of limitations upon your path. He says, tons also and tistels shall it bring forth unto thee. Then he said, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat uh, 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 of the ground. In other words, he's saying that you will have a sweatful life. Everything you do will be with sweat. And when you are sweating, it means that you are actually struggling. You are actually pushing. You see, so when a father's heart shifts from the child, or when a child's heart also shifts from the father, you see, the environment within which they operate becomes difficult. 
If they are in a workplace, the workplace becomes difficult for them. If they are in school, the school also becomes difficult for them. If they are in a farm, the farm also becomes difficult for them. Remember that that word earth, it also means territory. So your territory becomes cursed. So when a father's heart shifts from the child, a father doesn't love the daughter again, doesn't love the son again, his territory can be cursed. His house can be cursed. His home can be cursed. People can be in the house, but they are not joyful. People can be in the house, they are eating, but there is a lot of fear. People can be in the house, they are close to where there is money and everything, but they are operating under intimidation, inferiority complex, and they become full of timidity. They cannot be themselves. Why? Because we are doing things and our hearts are not really into the things that are being done. Now, so, so devastating is the curse that God himself does not want to bring that curse any longer. That is why Jesus came to come and break all these curses. But you see, he says that I don't want to come and smite the earth with a curse again. I don't want to come and curse your territory. So he says, I am going to send the prophet Elijah. Why Elijah? Because he was the strongest and one of the most powerful prophets of the Old Testament. And he says, I'm going to send my strongest prophetic gift so that he will cause the father's heart to turn to the children and the heart of the children to turn to the father. And so this morning, because God says he will send the prophet, listen carefully, he says because God will send the prophet and he will come with the mandate to turn. I am titling my subtitle, I'm titling my message this morning, prophetic turning point in the father-child relationship. Prophetic turning point in the father-child relationship. Prophetic turning point in the father-child relationship. And when we talk about fathers, mothers don't get sad, it's talking about you also. It's talking about you also. So mothers, you see, so a daughter's heart must not shift from the father or shift from the mother. And the mother's heart must also not shift from the father, from the son, or from the daughter. Your heart must be intact. Other than that, your territory can be under a curse. Your territory can be under a curse. You know, sometimes you can go to places and you are in a hurry to leave the place. You are in a hurry to run out of the place. Everything is there. Food is there. Clothes are there. Luxury. Everything is over there. But you are in a hurry to run out of the place because a curse is in operation in that house. So understand this morning that for those of you who are the new creation people who say that the curse has been broken and all that, the curse of the father and the mother, when you dishonor them, is still in place. It's still a force that remains on the earth. That is why Paul said in Ephesians 6, 1 to 3, he says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father, Ephesians 3, 1 to 3. Ephesians 6, 1 to 3. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Verse 2, it says, honor thy father and thy mother. It says, for this is the first commandment with a promise that it may be well with thee that thou mayest live long upon the earth. So, still, if a child dishonors the father or the, the heart shifts from the father or the father's heart shifts from the son or from the daughter, God comes to smite the place with a curse. That is why God says he will send his prophet. So this morning, I'm happy that God has sent me as a prophet. I've come to break all curses in the name of Jesus and I've come to restore father-children relationship in the name of Jesus. Now, so let's begin to define our key terms. Let's begin to define our key terms. What is the prophetic turning point? When we say a prophetic turning point uh, for the child, for the, in the father-child relationship, what does it mean? It means a decisive, positive change. It's a decisive, positive change in the father-child relationship. A decisive, positive change in the father child relationship in other words when there is a prophetic turning point in the father child relationship children are no longer afraid of their fathers children are no longer scared of them fathers are no longer doesn't don't don't feel somewhere again when they see their children 
Look, people can be in your house who are seeing you as a father, but you don't see them as your children. You know, and, and, and this is wrong. Your heart must not shift from your children, and your children's heart also must not shift uh, um, from, from, from the fathers. Number two, the definition I want to give is the definition of a father. Who is a father? A father is someone who reproduces himself in another. A father is someone who reproduces himself in another. You know, sometimes uh, some fathers impregnate their wives and they are like, they were not the ones who impregnated the women. Then the women deliver, and when they deliver, they see their ear on the, on the, on the head of the child. Their, their exact ear is on, the, is, on the, is on the head of the child, <laughs> or the, the nose is on the head of the child, or the child has just taken their face. So a father is one who reproduces himself in another. Or a father is one who raises a child into adulthood. A father is one who raises a child into adulthood. So fatherhood is not just impregnating and giving birth, but the one who raises the person from a child until the person becomes an adult and becomes independent financially, mentally, emotionally, and the person is on his own. And so anybody who raises a child into adulthood is a father to that person or is a mother to that person. And then who is a child in this case? A child, of course, from the definition of a father, is one in whom a father has reproduced himself. And so you, you don't just go around calling everybody your son. This is my son. This is my daughter. I don't do that. Whether spiritual or physical, I don't do that. I don't go around calling people who is who and whatever. It is not necessary. The thing is that what shows that somebody is your son or your daughter, it, it shows in the resemblance. It shows in the resemblance. Once the person is doing or the person resembles you, you can say that that is your son or that is your daughter. Why? Because there is a resemblance. So these are the key terms. The next point I want to go to, uh, the, the, which is very important, are the types of fathers there are. The types of fathers there are. Understand that the father is the focal point of uh, Malachi chapter 4 verse 6 because without the father the child wouldn't have even come into the picture in the first place and so a father is so important that's how come we are talking about the types of father the first type of father we have is what we call the heavenly father heavenly father Matthew 23 verse 9 Jesus speaking he says and call no man father upon earth for one is your father which is in heaven. Now, when he says that don't call any man upon earth your father, it doesn't mean that don't call your father father because the same Jesus said, a certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, father, give me the portion of goods that falleth unto me. But what Jesus was referring to is the fact that when it comes to fatherhood, there is no perfect human father. There is no perfect earthly father. The only perfect father there is, is God in heaven so for so for those of you who look at your father with a very critical eye this scripture is actually for you understand that there is no perfect father you watching me you are not perfect your father also you must not expect that he will be a perfect person in other words there may be some imperfection somewhere but understand you know that a father is a father any problem are we good are we on course all right a father uh, 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 is, is not always perfect. And so you, you need to understand that God is your father, but aside God, God, also, God has also made provisions for other fathers. The next is what we call the biological father. The biological father. The biological father, you know, is the one who impregnated your mother and your mother got pregnant and gave birth to you. That's your biological uh, father. Number three, we have what we call um, your father in Christ. Your father in Christ is the one who either led you to God or Christ or the one who is a founder of the church within which you fellowship. Your father in Christ is either the one who led you to Christ or the one who founded the church or the one through whom God founded um, the church or the denomination within which you fellowship. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. 
First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15, it says, For though ye have many instructors, or a thousand instructors, yet have ye not many fathers. For though you have one thousand instructors, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. So Paul says here, he lays claim on the members in the church at Corinth and says that he is their father. And sometimes when people don't know um, who their father is, you need to stamp your authority and tell them, look, you are my son, you are my daughter, sit down, let me talk to you. So he says to them that, for in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. So the father, the person who led you to Christ, or the one who founded the denomination, Paul, in this case, was the one who started the church. He says, I planted, I pulled those waters, but God gave the increase. He calls himself the father of the church at Corinth. Then number, is it number four? Number four is your spiritual father. Your spiritual father is uh, uh, your pastor, the one who preaches to you. Your spiritual father is your pastor, the one who preaches to you, or the one who trained you, ordained you, or appointed or commissioned you into the ministry. That is your spiritual father. So the one who pastors you, the one who teaches you, the one who trained you, the one who ordained you, the one who commissioned you, the one who appointed you, um, is your spiritual father. In Ephesians 6, 1, it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord. It's actually talking about spiritual fathers. It says your parents in the Lord, not your parents in the world. Or your parents after the flesh by your parents in the lord so it's talking about spiritual fatherhood first timothy 1 2 paul said unto my own son unto timothy my own son in the faith grace mercy and peace from god our father and from jesus christ so paul calls timothy his own son in the in the faith or in the ministry then number five I have what we call a father figure. That's the last type of father we have. What we call a father figure. This can be your stepfather, a foster father, a guardian, um, school father, school mother. Uh, it could be a father of a, a, a classroom, class prefect, whatever father it is. There are different types of fathers. But anybody who plays the role of a father is also a father to you. That's a father figure. In Esther chapter 2 verse 7, in Esther chapter 2 verse 7, it says that he brought up Hadassah, that is Esther. He says he brought up, he's talking about Mordecai, he brought up Hadassah, that is Esther. For she had neither father nor mother. And the maid was fair and beautiful. It says Esther was very beautiful. Then he said, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. So you see here that Mordecai, you know, who uh, brought up Esther as his own daughter, actually brought her up and they were actually first cousins because he was the son or he was the uncle's uh, 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 um, daughter. But then Mordecai brought her up as his, own, uh, as his own daughter. So what it means is that at a point in time, your cousin can even become your father or can even become your mother. It all depends. It, it all depends on the role the person is playing. Even your sister or your brother can also become a father to you at a certain point um, in your life. If only you can recognize it and say that this is my mother and this is my father. You know, but sometimes we, we operate under pride. We operate under pride. We like taking money from people. We like taking things from people. But to recognize them as our father and as our mother becomes a problem for us. We, we don't accept them. Sometimes we are even jealous of these same people. Mordecai was just a cousin to Esther. And he took her up. He took, her for, he took him for his own daughter. And, and that is just it. You know, so, so once you are under the covering of somebody, once somebody is guiding you, once somebody is giving you advice, once somebody is uh, taking care of you and sorting you out, the, the person is playing the role of a father in your life. The, the person is playing the role of a father in your life and it takes humility to say that this is a father to me or this is a mother 
actually unto me. And so let us understand, let us not fight the things that God has already ordained. And there are some fathers who are also very insecure. Understand that you alone cannot father your child. I mean, at a, to, I mean till the child grows. That is why your child goes to school. You cannot stay in the boarding house with your child. Somebody else becomes a school father or a school mother over the child. So there will be different fathers that God will bring to your child. Your prayer must be that the fathers that God brings to the child will be good, will be good people and will be good fathers. And so let me now move on. Uh, my message is loaded this morning, but it's a blessing. Let me now move on to talk about what happens when a father's heart shifts from the child. What happens? I only talk about four. What happens when a father's heart shifts from the child? Number one, what happens when a father's heart shifts from the child? Uh, number one, are you with me? Number one, he ignores the child. He ignores the child. In 2 Samuel chapter 14, verse 24, in 2 Samuel 14, 24, this is David. The Bible says, and the king said, let him turn to his own house. So Absalom returned to his own house. He says, let him turn to his own house and let him not see my face. This is his own son. He says, let him not see my face. So Absalom returned to his own house and saw not the king's face. His father's heart shifted from him. Why? Because Absalom killed Amnon, his own brother, in cold blood. And because he killed him, the father's heart shifted from him. That's Second Samuel chapter 14, verse 24. Second Samuel chapter 14, verse 24. He says, and the king said, Second Samuel 14, 24. And the king said, let him turn to his own house and let him not see my face. So Absalom returned to his own house and saw not the king's face. When the father's heart shifts from the daughter or from the son, he doesn't want to see that, that son. He doesn't want to see that child. He doesn't send that child. He doesn't chat with that child. He doesn't flow with that child. He ignores the child totally as if the child doesn't even exist. The devil is bad. I'll come to talk about what happens, um, some, some of the factors that can even happen that cause the father's heart to shift or the child's heart um, to shift and you also understand some things. So, so when a father's heart shifts from the child, he totally ignores the child. The child can be in the same, they can be in the same house, but he pretends he doesn't see the child or he, he ignores the child totally and doesn't even take notice uh, of the child. Number two, when a father's heart shifts from the child, he can curse the child. He can curse the child. Now, Jacob, one day came back to the house, and when he came back to the house, he was told that his eldest son, Reuben, had slept with his concubine, Bilha. He didn't say anything. He waited. When he was about to die, he cursed Reuben. <laughs> he cursed Reuben. In Genesis chapter 49, verse 3 and 4, he says, Reuben, thou art my might, the firstborn of my strength. You are, the, you are the beginning of my, of my, uh, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, uh, my, my, the beginning of my strength. In other words, the, my firstborn. The excellency of dignity, the excellency of power. Unstable as water. He said, I curse you today. You shall not excel. You shall not excel because thou wentest up into thy father's bed. Then defilest thou it. Then he says, if you are confused, he went up to my couch. In other words, he says he jumped into his bed. You too, if you want to funny, if you want to sleep with your, your, your father's wife, is it your father's bed that you go and do that thing? But this is what uh, Reuben did, and because of that, the father cursed him. When a father's heart shifts from the child, he you easily uh, pronounces curses over the child. You know, fathers, don't tell your children, you till you grow up to meet it. You till you grow up to see it. Don't be using those words because you are using it lightly to say that um, your child doesn't understand you, but in a subtle way, you are cursing your child. And so when a father has shifts from the child, uh, the father can curse the child as we see in the case of Jacob over here. Then finally, um, is it, how many do I have, have I given you so far? Two. The third one. When a father's heart shifts from the child, he abuses the child. He abuses the child. 
to abuse somebody, to abuse somebody means to treat with violence, to treat with violence, or to treat harshly, to treat with violence, or to treat harshly. And sometimes when a father's heart sits from the child, he can physically abuse the child or he can verbally abuse the child, screaming on the child, shouting, shouting on the child, or sometimes in some I mean, weird cases also, they, they do other abuses like molestation and others, uh, which is not our focus because it doesn't usually happen and so we cancel it. But you see, the commonest one is that people abuse their children. You know, Sometimes a father, it's not, it's not saying that don't lash your children. Lash your children. You know, you say you give the child um, six lashes. You give the child six lashes. And the child went. Two of them, two of them didn't go to church. You said if you don't go to church, I'll give you six lashes. So you gave one six lashes. Then the second one, you didn't give the child six lashes. You gave the person numerous lashes. Obviously, you don't like that one. It's obvious that you don't like that one. You know, because if you like that one also, if you give this one sex, you will give this one also sex. So when a father's heart shifts from the child, he abuses the child with words. You know, one day, I, 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 a certain woman was telling me that the husband, she wanted to leave the husband. I was like, why do you want to leave your husband? Don't leave your husband. Stay with him and all that. And she said that he abuses me. And I said, oh, I mean, if he's not, does he beat you? She said, no. Does he use a cane on you? She said, no. Does he, does he slap you? She said, no. And I said, ah, I mean, then that is it. Then she said to me, pastor, if you understand how dangerous emotional or verbal abuses you will you won't tell me to stay because he says she said she, she said to me when she's going to the market the words play back in her ears the way she he screams over her it plays back in her ears and it, it, it brings her morale always low so when somebody's heart shifts you know from the father from the child they can abuse the child. And number four, I'll end with that one for that one, for that part. When the father's heart shifts from the child, he doesn't take care of the child. Why? You see, you, you see Jesus said in Matthew 6, 21, he says, did I give a scripture for the abuse? Um, Colossians chapter 3, 21. Colossians 3, 21, he says, and fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Lest they be discouraged. So a father who abuses his children, who does hey, 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 over the children, he discourages the children. Then he said, the final one I'm talking about in that area is um, that he doesn't take care of the children. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 21, he says, for where your, your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So a father whose heart is with the children easily spends on the children. But a father whose heart shifts away doesn't easily spend on the children. African fathers are good at paying school fees, but not taking care of the children. <laughs> and and, and, uh, and uh, sometimes, I mean, they don't think about any other thing. They just pay school fees, ask whether the child will eat provisions and all that. They don't think about it. One day, a certain father and the mother were in the car, and they were going, they were passing in front of the children's senior high school. And the mother said, ah, let's visit. He said, no, 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 no. And the reason is that when they go, definitely he must give something. And because of that, he didn't want to go. So he never went. He never visited. He will pass right in front of the school. I mean, branch at the junction, but will never go into the school. When a father's heart shifts, you know, from the child, he doesn't want to take care of the children, doesn't want to pay their school fees, doesn't want to spend money on them doesn't want to take care of them. There are some people who they are good at paying the school fees of other people by their own. They will never pay their school fees. You know, and they are very dangerous things. But I'll come to explain a few things. Then what happens? Let's go now to what happens when a child's heart shifts from the father. What happens when... A, are you all following at the various house fellowships? All right. What happens when a, when a child's heart shifts from the father? What happens? Number one. The child disobeys the father. The child disobeys the father. The child disobeys the father. So the child doesn't want to do anything the father says. Anything the father says, the child does not want to obey. In uh, Colossians chapter 3 verse 20, it says, Children, 
Obey your parents in all things. In all things. In all things. For this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Colossians 3 verse 20. Children, obey your parents in all things. Your father, obey your father in all things. Your father can choose a, man, a woman for you, choose a man for you. I mean, and what have you? Guide you. Obey in all things. Um, your father. Uh, obey in all things. Your parents. So, but when a, fa- when a child's heart shifts from the father, he doesn't want to um, obey. You know, in Proverbs 23, 22, he says that, Hearken unto thy father that begat thee. Hearken unto thy father that begat thee. So your father will give birth to you. You are supposed to listen to him. You are supposed to obey him. But when a child's heart shifts, he doesn't want to obey. He wants to discuss issues with the father. You know, recently I was telling my dad that I've always obeyed him. Everything he's asked me to do, I've done. You know, one day I brought a lady to the house. I said to, the, I said to him, this is the lady I wanted to marry. He said, I don't like the lady. Give me points. Gave me three points why he doesn't like the lady. And uh, I took the three points. I copied it, wrote it down, and I went to show it to the lady. I said, my father doesn't like you. And because he doesn't like you, <laughs> because he doesn't like you, we cannot stay together and um, we cannot marry. And then that was it. The lady said, wow, your father is, uh, is a wizard. I said, wow, <laughs> why do you say my father is a wizard? Because everything he said was a revelation. It was a revelation. I mean, there were hidden things, but the lady said it's true, you know. And I learned from it that as a pastor, when you are guy, when you are counseling people, never speak evil about the people they want to marry. Don't go and tell them, <laughs> because I just copied it and went to show it to her that this is it, you know. So I mean, what I, I brought that point to make you see that even when it comes to marriage, you have to be obedient. You have to obey. Obey in all things. Obey in all things. Number two, when a child's heart shifts from the father, he despises the father. He despises it. To despise is a very strong word. It means to hate. It means to dislike. It means to hate. It means to dislike. So when a child's heart shifts from the father or shifts from the mother, they, 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 they despise the mother. You know, in Proverbs 23, 22, which we read earlier, it says, Hearken unto thy father which begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. When women hit menopause, it's a very difficult time. One day someone said to me that she was going to see a psychologist to advise her about how to handle her mother. I said, you don't need a psychologist. Your mother has hit menopause. At menopause, several things happen to women. They sweat when they shouldn't sweat. They feel, they feel um, hot when they shouldn't feel hot. When they should feel hot too, they feel cold. Sometimes they say things they don't mean. They complain. They talk a lot. I mean, they are difficult at that, at that point. You may look like they are difficult, but they are not really difficult. So at that point, when your mother is complaining about something, you, you rather just have to listen and allow, it, allow her to learn. When she learns, forget about it. Don't talk about it. Later, you get back to her and talk to her about what she was complaining about. But when she's complaining and you begin to also talk, she will cry on you right now. She has hit menopause because she will say you don't understand her. And so when a mother gets old, you can easily despise your mother. Many people despise their mothers. You know, and, and, when, and I, always, I always say that when you truly love somebody, even if toilet is coming out of the person, you can stand it. You can stand it. But when you are always running away, it means that your love is not complete. If a, a, a mother doesn't run away from the child who has pooped on himself, she is there cleaning it. The scent and everything is normal. She can even be chewing bread and be cleaning the baby at the same time. Why? Because the love is deep. I have seen children whose mothers died and they couldn't get closer to the dead body. They despised their mothers till they died. I have seen mothers who get sick and the children cannot get close to them in their sickness. Why? Because they despise the, 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 their mothers. People, don't despise your mother when she's old. Don't despise your father when he's old. Don't do it. You know, one day, I was in school. I was doing well in school. I had gone for a spelling bee contest. 
and I had won. I was popular in my junior high school. And because of the popularity, one day the headmistress, Mrs. Demanya, she requested to, to meet my dad. And so I told my dad that my headmistress wants to meet you on Monday. And I was, by then, uh, he, he had two cars. He was driving this uh, Renault 4, the one that you push the gear inside and pull out. Then GPCC had bought him Opel Ascona, brand new, fresh car. So when I told my dad that the headmistress wanted to see him, I thought he was going to come in the Opel Asc Ascona. And I thought because he was a pastor, he was going to be in suit and tie. But here was I in the class, and I saw the car coming. It was the Renault 4, blue or green or so, coming. I said, okay, that's what he decided to bring. Okay. When he came out, he was in a T-shirt, short, you know, small T-shirt. I said, hey. <laughs> so I took him to the headmistress office. One teacher, Miss Kofi, was looking at him. Uh, she almost fell in the office. You know, but that is my father. You must not despise your father. People despise their fathers. They despise their mothers when they are old. They don't even want to mention the village they come from. They don't want to mention the house they come from. Because maybe people who are staying at Ashaima, when you ask them where they stay, they say they are in Tema. But when you are taking a car from La Paz, they will tell you, don't take Tema car, take Ashaima car. When you get to Ashaima station, take uh, maybe Zenu car. And you are going to say no. So you, you wonder, why do you say you are a Tema when you are actually at a Shaiman? You despise where you actually are. Don't despise your father. Don't despise your mother when she's old. Number three, when a child's heart shifts from the father, they dishonor them. They dishonor them. Am I on course? They dishonor them. Why? Because your heart has shifted. Again, Matthew 6, 21 Matthew 6, 21, Jesus says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So once a heart shifts from the father, you dishonor the father. You don't want to see him. You don't want to mention him. You don't want to call his name. You don't even want to be associated with him. You don't want to sleep in the same room with him. Some people cannot stand their fathers at all. They dishonor them. Very dangerous. And when they get to the place where they start having money, before their father will see their money, it takes a lot. But you see, listen, when you were a child, there were days that you came to take money from your father, you went to school, and you went to use the money, you wasted the money. Now, the table turns. You know, recently I was telling my dad now, it's like he wanted to do something, he's trying to do something this week, that, and I was telling him, now the table has turned. You know, when we were younger, we were your children. We were deciding for you. Now, the table has turned. You are older. We have to decide for you. <laughs> now, so, what I'm trying to say here is that sometimes as a child, you took money from your dad. You know, those days I was in the university. I can tell my dad I need to buy some, uh, do for some photocopies. And when they send me the money, I'll go and sit at the JCR, buy Malta Guinness, cross my leg, drink, and eat fufu heavy, and watch, a mov <laughs> watch a movie. You know, I'm wasting the money. But you see, the father has given to me. Now, there comes a point where your father also will be taking money from you. And when your father asks you for money, don't say he's going to waste it. And so you are not going to give to him. You know, recently, my dad, um, I, I, I think it was, it was some money. Also, I don't know what it was, but I gave something to my dad. And he said, he was telling me what he used the money for. And I said, no, dad, you don't need to explain anything to me. I gave you the money. Whatever you want to use it for. I mean, I, in fact, he came to see me in the office. I said, I said, I said money is your money. Whatever you want to use it for, I mean, it, it, it's your business. I mean, I don't need to know at all. You don't need to explain anything to me because it's a blessing for me that I have that when you ask, I can give to you. Listen, change your heart towards your father. Change your heart towards your father. So me, when my father asks me anything, I don't complain. I tried to look for a way to make it happen. He told me he wanted to celebrate his 70, 75th birthday. You know, I even had to borrow money to organize it for him and paid it in bits until I finally cleared it. You see, I didn't say, oh, my dad is making a demand. He's, he's squeezing me. He has pushed me into a tight corner. No complaint. No complaint because my heart is with him. For me, anything that will make him happy 
you know, in his old age till he goes home to be with the Lord. That's okay. Because when you are also, when you're also younger, your father will try to please you and do whatever will make you happy. And then number four, number four, when a child's heart shifts from the father, the child mocks, criticizes, and accuses the father. The child mocks, criticizes, and accuses the father. Proverbs 30 verse 17. Proverbs 30 verse 17. He says, The eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother, it says, The ravens of the field shall pick the eyes out, and the young eagles shall eat it. I'll say it again. It says, The eye that mocketh at his father and despise the Proverbs 30 17. The eye that mocketh at his father and despise to obey his mother. It says, The ravens of the field shall pick out his eyes. And when they pick it out, don't eat it. The eagles, the young eagles, they will come and eat it. What it means is that if you are in the business of mocking your father, you will lose vision for life. You will lose vision for life. You will walk in darkness. You will walk in obscurity. You will not amount to anything. So be careful when you are mocking at your father, when you are laughing at your father. Be careful when you are criticizing your father. Be careful when you are criticizing your father. And be careful when you are accusing your father. It's true that your father didn't look after you. But maybe if we were to be in the shoes of your father, you may have done worse. Don't accuse him. Don't criticize him. Don't mock him. Don't even use your father as a good example of a bad example. <laughs> Don't use him as a good example of a very bad example. Don't use him. Never use your father as an example. Don't laugh at him. Don't laugh at his shoe. If you don't like his shoe, buy him a new one. Don't mock at your father. Don't criticize him. Don't criticize him. And do not accuse him. It says, otherwise the ravens of the field will pick, out your, your, they will pick out your eyes. And when they pick out your eyes, the young eagles shall eat it. Now, let me answer the question. What makes a father's heart shift from the child and a child's heart shift from the father? I'll give you four quick points. Number one, evil spirits. Evil spirits. An evil spirit can enter into a father and the father will always be cursing the children. An evil spirit can enter into a father. The father will never pay the school fees of the children. An evil spirit can enter into a father. The father will leave the children, run away from the house and go and be looking after other children. An evil spirit can enter into a child's house. The child will become stubborn. The child will begin to smoke. The child will begin to do wild things. Evil spirits. The prodigal son, when he came to himself, meaning that an evil spirit did this. Adam, before he ate the fruit, it was an evil spirit that deceived his wife. And then they ate. So Adam's heart shifted from the father because an evil spirit entered the wife and then turned his heart away from God the father. Evil spirits are good at turning the heart away. So an evil spirit can take your daughter's heart from your house. Your daughter doesn't want to stay in the house. An evil spirit. And you know sometimes as a pastor, I see wickedness. But you can't say it. Sometimes you can see somebody's grandmother doing something. You, you can't say it because when you say it, the, the family will break down. But it's there. These are, tr these are truths. You see witchcraft, cousins who are witches, but you can't say it. You, do, you are not permitted to say it. It's not everything you see as a man of God that you should say. You have to keep quiet about them. But you just have to help the people to fight them. So evil spirits can cause people, people's hearts to shift. Uh, uh, number two, uh, what was the second one? Uh, bad association bad association or evil association. Adam ate the fruit not because he went to eat it himself. It was his wife that told him to eat it. So sometimes a son can, be, can become difficult because he has a girlfriend who is advising him against the family or a wife who is advising him against the family. And so understand that bad association, it can cause a child's heart to shift against, towards the father and cause the father's heart also to shift uh, um, um, from the child. 
Hallelujah. Am I helping somebody uh, uh, at all? So it, it, it's important that we identify this truth. Number three, blindness to the curse. Blindness to the curse. The fathers, you know, like I was saying today, usually we say that children, if you don't obey your parents, you operate under a curse. You, the father too, if your heart shifts from your children, you will operate under a curse. According to Malachi chapter 4, verse 6, God said, I will not come and curse you. I will come and smite the earth, your territory, with a curse. So a father's house can be cursed. A father's business can be cursed. A father's ministry can be cursed. Forgive. Forgive. So he says to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. I've forgotten the fourth point. So it will be in the devotion that you can read it. Let me conclude. Now, how does the prophet help in restoring the relationship of the father and the child? How does the prophet? Now, let me say this part. Listen to it carefully. When God was saying that he would send Elijah, he was not going to send, he was not going to send first Elijah literally. He was sending um, John the Baptist. But he says that he needs the prophet, what a prophet represents. Listen carefully. What a prophet represents to be able to turn the hearts of the children to the fathers. And what does a prophet represent? The things they represent are the keys you can use to turn your heart towards your father or turn your heart towards your child. Number one, a prophet represents prayer. The first time the word prophet was mentioned in the word of God, it was associated with prayer. Abraham. Genesis 20 verse 7, he says, it was, God was speaking to Abimelech. He says, he says now, now therefore, restore the man his wife. For he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. If thou restore him not, he says, thou shalt die, and all that is thine. So he says that a prophet prays. In other words, you can use prayer to cause your child's heart to come back to the house. You can use prayer to cause your heart to turn properly towards your father. Sometimes you are staying with somebody, but you don't really love the person. You can pray to God to give you love for the person. You can pray to God to give you love for the person. Am I helping somebody at all? So prayer can help you. The prayer can help you. This morning I pray over every home. Any home where there is anarchy, let there be peace in the home. Let the father's heart turn towards the children and let the children's heart also turn towards the father. Number two, a prophet, one, another thing a prophet represents is the word of God because a prophet comes with the word of God. John 3, 34 says, Him whom God has sent speaketh the word of God for God giveth the spirit not by measure unto him. So a prophet who is a messenger of God, he speaks the word of God. So the word of God should also guide you. Now, the word should guide you, not circumstances, not your feelings. When he says in Exodus 20 verse 12, honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which I give you. He didn't say do it if your father looks after you. He didn't say do it if your father did not ignore you. He didn't say do it if your father was good to you all the days of your life. He says, just obey. When he was also saying to the parents, he says, the fathers provoke not your children to anger. He didn't say provoke them not um, when they are okay, when everything is okay. He didn't add any condition to it. He said, just don't provoke them. So the word of God, you see, people don't allow the word to change them. You don't need a prophet. Listen to this word today. Let your heart turn towards your father. And finally, a prophet represents prosperity. So your desire for prosperity should cause your heart to turn towards your father properly. Your desire for prosperity should cause your heart to turn towards your father properly. Second Chronicles 20, 20, B. I'll not read the first, but just the B. It says, believe in the Lord your God, and so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, it says, so shall he prosper. 
Ephesians 6 verse 3 says, That it may be well with thee, that thou mayest live long upon the earth. So the person who wants to prosper and do well must make sure that his heart doesn't shift from the Father. People, as I close this morning, don't let your heart shift from your Father. I pray that your heart will not shift from your Father. I pray that your heart will be intact with your Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you allow this word to enter into your being. Don't let your heart shift. Don't be angry with your dad. Don't be bitter towards your father. And fathers, don't be bitter towards your children. Don't disregard your children. You know, there are times when you are seeing somebody as a hero. Or that person is your champion. But the person doesn't even realize it. The person doesn't even recognize it. The person doesn't even know it. You know, and so the person doesn't even understand the whole thing. You know, but today, understand, you know, all the people that God has brought into your life for you to be a father to, for you to be a mother to, do it genuinely. Don't do things selfishly. Don't do things with a wrong motive. Don't do things with a wrong motive. Always let your heart be genuine towards everybody and towards all the things you are doing. And don't be partial. And so as I pray, as I close this morning, let there be peace in your heart. In Jesus' name. I think that the key points I want you to understand this morning as we begin to pray shortly is that evil spirits can turn somebody's heart away from the father and they can turn somebody's heart away from the child. I pray that whatever is wrong, God will correct it today in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your right hand, declare after me, Heavenly Father, let my heart be connected to my father, to the fathers you have brought into my life. Give me the humility to accept the fathers, to accept the mothers you have brought into my life. Give me the humility to acknowledge it in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody lift up your hands in the house fellowships everywhere. In the name of Jesus, I speak prophetically over your life that your heart will never shift from your father, that your heart will never shift from your children, that there will be no curse in operation over your house and over your family. Let there be peace in your home all the time. And if the devil has shifted your child's heart from your house, that your child's heart is far away from the house, today I bring their heart towards the house. I bring their minds towards the heart, that towards the house. In the mighty name of Jesus. And if your father's heart has shifted from you, I bring your, your father's heart towards you now. Receive the grace to do well in the name of Jesus. I counsel sicknesses. I take out evil out of your path. May you prosper. May you do well in the mighty name of Jesus. If you have heard the word today, I want to do this. And you, are, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Say this prayer after me, Lord Jesus. I thank you for coming to die for me. I confess I am a sinner. Forgive me all my sins. I accept you today, Lord Jesus, as my Lord and personal Savior. Come into my heart and be my master. Thank you. Amen. Well, God bless you so much um, for uh, joining us. It's time for us to pay our tithe. People have not been paying their tithes. People have not been paying their tithes. And you see, like I was saying, it, it's, it's, not, it's not about church. Not at all. It's about your, your blessing. The people who are giving the rules, who are giving the rules that you shouldn't go to church that you are happy about. What were they doing yesterday? What were they doing yesterday? They don't care about you. Nobody really cares about you but God. And so what I'm saying to you is that don't be happy. Don't be happy that maybe church is not meeting in church and you don't have to pay your tithes and all that. It's for your own prosperity. It's for your own prosperity. And so people, I want you to take your tithe and let's give to God today. If you are paying your tithe today at the house fellowship, please lift up your right hand and let's pray. And let's pray. I bless you today in the name of Jesus. I declare the heavens are opened over your life. You will do well. You will succeed in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive that grace from God. As you pay your tithe, may the Lord rebuke the devourer for your sake. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now take your offering. Let's give to God. Take a very good offering. Take a very good offering. 20 pounds, $20. Uh, not Japanese yen, but take very good currency. And let's bless the name of the Lord. This is kingdom advancement offering. Kingdom advancement offering. And let's give to God. Send your money. Is the, the, the number is on the screen already. 0245. I believe is the number there. 
0245 It has become like a lotto number in my head. Please send your money to, to it and God will bless you. Lift up your offering. Father, sanctify every offering today as we give. We are blessed. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Send your offering as the choir is singing. Oh, I'm 
All right, God bless you um, for joining us. Sunday evening, this week, this week I'm really believing God that we'll, we'll tell the chapel. And on Sunday, we'll have the service online in the morning, 8.30 to 10, and then 10.30 to 12. But in the evening at 4 p.m., I would want us to gather at the church and have what we call a tarry prayer meeting. And so we'll pray to be a healing and a deliverance time. Uh, I said the people who gave the rule yesterday, they were having fun. So uh, we'll meet in the chapel next Sunday, 4 o'clock. It's a prayer meeting. Join us to pray. We are healing and deliverance time. And um, let's pray. And, uh, but we'll have the services in the morning. Now, t- Tuesday, there'll be teaching service 8 to 9 in English, 8.15 to 9 p.m. in Ewa and Tree. Then Wednesday to Friday will be our covenant week. We'll be fasting. We'll be praying. The fasting, you can take it easy. You can do up to 12. You can do up to 3. You can do up to 5. Then in the evening at 7 p.m., uh, we'll gather to pray. This week, I think that uh, the prayer meetings will just be in English from 7 to 8.30 every night. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Friday will be um, Holy Ghost Empowerment Service. This week will be our covenant week of breaking the spirit of poverty. Covenant week of breaking the spirit of poverty. And uh, we'll be dealing with Ziba and Zamona uh, on Friday. And I'll be anointing, we'll be praying over anointing oil and water on Friday. God richly bless you. Remember the Sunday evening, 4 p.m. we'll be meeting at the church. We'll meet in the morning, um, house fellowship level. We watch the Facebook live. Then in the evening we'll meet at the church. Because people are coming to me in the office. We are doing deliverance and praying for people. So... Uh, let's meet at the church. Let's pray. Let's sort ourselves out. God richly uh, bless you. All right. Some people joined us today, and we are glad you were able to join us. Who people? Which people? All right. Sally is helping me with the with the names. Okay. We have Anita's House Fellowship at Lashibi, Jeffrey's House Fellowship at Lincoln's House, Winifred's House Fellowship at Auntie Esther's House, Martha Frimpong. Hey, where did you go? She has come back to life. Agbenyega Abigail, Dorcas Chawete. Hey, Dorcas Chawete, all the way from um, Nursing School, Keta. God bless you. Esther Safo. Eric Saki, Emmanuel Kojo, Asamwa, um, Joe. Uh, Harriet Frimpon. Ima is called Joe. I don't understand it. But um, Harriet Frimpon, Akosia Halali, Patricia, Akpese. Hey, Caesar Selassie. Caesar, you didn't go to church. Mega Colinus and the House Fellowship. God bless you. Edu Jiwuga. Cindy Maika. Prof and Mr. Seedu and the family at Legon. God bless you. At the family at Made Gardens. God bless you. Pastor Manasse at Benyega. Uh, God bless you. Tina Taki Thompson of RAN. God bless you. Elom at and I'm sure Elom is watching with Mami, uh, with Bubune, and then with Elvis. God bless you so much for joining us. And many other people who joined us from Dubai, uh, China, and Italy, and Togo, and Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, God richly bless all of you for joining us. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that is our announcement. Well, this morning, I um, want to say happy Father's Day to all fathers. Um, I appreciate my father-in-law. Thank you for uh, pieces of advice. Conversations we have had, we can't share. You can't talk about me too. I can't talk about very powerful times and uh, very powerful. God bless you. I want to appreciate that. Chris, I bless you. Thank you. Uh, for making me work with you. I learned a lot of things about business, entrepreneurship, and uh, how to control things uh, from you. Uh, God bless you. Uh, I also want to appreciate uh, Prof. Asiedu. Thank you for standing with me in the ministry. Uh, thank you for looking after the whole church at a point. If I say you're looking after the whole church, what it means is that you're paying me at a point uh, when the church didn't have. Um, God richly bless you. I appreciate you today. And um, I appreciate uh, Prophet Kakrabedin. If I had not met you in 2008, maybe I would have, I would have left the ministry, I would have left Ghana and traveled outside and be doing something different. I would have been completely out of the will of God. And so I appreciate you today. And with your beautiful wife, Lady Reverend Erajwa uh, Baden, God bless you so much. And I appreciate my biological father and spiritual father who have nurtured me, taught me so many things uh, that I cannot mention. I've learned about, and he too, I've had discussions with him. 
He can't tell anybody. Me too, I can't tell anybody. It is with us when we meet in heaven, we'll continue. <laughs> and so, God bless you, my father, Bishop Chris Gauga. And so we say happy Father's Day to all the fathers today. Remember your father today and say, nah, don't be fake in your messages you send. Be genuine for once. <laughs> Be genuine in your life for once. Be genuine in your life for once. Don't be fake in your messages you send, uh, you send and uh, say things which you don't mean. If you don't have any to just say happy Father's Day. Don't have to say you are my daddy, you are my this, you are my whatever. When you know in your heart, it's not really true. Don't let your heart shift. All right. So God richly bless all of you today. And uh, be encouraged. You know, as I was, as I was singing, as the choir was singing, God was ministering to me. I was telling me that um, fathers, I should tell the fathers that don't be insecure. Don't be insecure. Know that your presence gives security to your children. Your, your, your presence is a blessing to everybody around you. Don't be insecure. And children also, don't disobey your parents. If your father says, appear at Malamata Market, whether you feel like it or not, appear there and make him happy so that God doesn't smite your territory with a curse. So God bless all of you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Rise up, let's take the benediction. May the Almighty God bless and keep you. This week will be the best week of your life. May you be fruitful in everything you do. May you see success at all levels. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. See you on Tuesday.